Hey gang, I uh, just thought we'd go through and do sort of a um, shallow dive in on the progress tracker, which I call my sprint watch. Um, basically what I do is I just kind of go through the progress tracker, which is sort of one half of CIG's roadmap view. And uh, just kind of talk about the major changes that have happened there and sort of what I see as the uh, big moves, like if something increases a lot in time or if it's about to end. Uh, right now we're in between two patches. We're in between 3.17.4, which just dropped for IAE, and 3.18, which is currently with Evocati. And a uh, quick point on that is I am actually Evocati and I'm under NDA, so I can't actually speculate about what's happening in 3.18 because I'm actually playing it and I'm under NDA. So anything you hear me, I'm not going to be saying anything about what I think is going to be in 3.18. Now, 3.19 is still on the table because 3.19 isn't anywhere near Evocati and probably won't be until March. So I'm going to babble about that all I want. Uh, that said, there weren't many changes this time, so this one will be relatively short on that point. I'll still have a few things to talk about. Normally I have a couple pages worth of notes. Today I have half of one. Instead, I am going to focus on um, something that's been a little bit of a hot topic in the, uh, in the community for this week, and that's the Banu Merchantman. Um, and I'm going to talk about its development just a hair uh, when we get to that on the progress tracker. It probably won't go the way you think it will. Uh, I am definitely a Banu Merchantman fanboy. For anyone that's been watching this channel for a while, you know that. Uh, before we get into this, a um, couple house cleaning issues. So... Uh, I was right on the size of the cutter originally, where I thought that would be somewhere between a prospector and a cutlass in size, and it turns out it's around that range. Um, I'd say it roughly falls into the category of like the Reliant or the Nomad or um, the Avenger Titan. It's around that size. Uh, I guess 300i would be in there too, or 300 series would fall in there. Um, but it's priced like a starter, so uh, that's pretty cool. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit when we get to the progress tracker, too, because there was there was an interesting little thing that I got wrong about it, too. Um, the unfortunate thing about that is... Well, I'll, I'll get to that right now. So uh, one, one thing i got to tip my hat to... Uh, Nevermore in the comments on when I was doing wild speculation. Um, I was saying that this over here was the was the cutter, and this was probably the cutterless, which would make that the Pisces. Uh, and Nevermore said it's two Corsairs. So I was kind of like, yeah, you think so? Maybe. I mean, it just looked like these things were two different size. Uh, Nevermore was correct. Definitely two, two Corsairs. Um, now, looking back on the blurry image, this was the thing, looking at this, I was like, well, if this is a Corsair, and this is the Cutter, then the Cutter's got to be bigger than I thought it was, especially if that's a Pisces. Um, but, nope, it, it turns out the, the Cutter is slightly larger than the Aurora, be in that size range. So, um, yeah, credit to Nevermore, he was right. Um, here we go. Look at that. It's pretty. I mean, I could kind of see why I was thrown off. It does look like this one's a little bit further back, but I'm not sure if that's because the dots are creating an optical illusion or the lighting makes it look a little bit different. It does look like the nose is a little bit closer on this one. I'm going to blame their parking. There we go. So let's go ahead and get into this. So I always start this off, if you've never seen this before, welcome. Uh, if you have seen this before, you probably know how this goes. Uh, I'll put little chapters down in the down below part so you can skip through this if you've seen it before. I always start this with uh, caveats, and it's basically the same caveats that CIG uses. Uh, CIG uses the Agile Development System um, to produce their game. 
and uh, games, I guess, and Squadron 42 is in there too. And so what they do is they'll give a team a project and they'll say, you've got two weeks. So work on this for two weeks, you know, blue sky, just go, go, go. Uh, they'll work on it for two weeks. And then at the end of the two weeks, they reassess and they sort of say, okay, we're done. It's, it's complete. We can put it in the game right now and work great. Almost never happens. Uh, or they say, we need more time. Um, we're going to need five weeks to finish this thing. Or they'll say, we need another team to come in to do this, or we need, um, we need this tool to be developed. Or we need, like, these mechanics need to come in before this thing would make sense. Or we need this mechanic to come in before we'd even know how to build this thing. And so those kind of things will either mean that those other teams will come in and get involved and kind of do their sprints, and then the original team can kind of come in and do their part. Or they'll just sort of say, well, this team is working on 30 other things, so... How about we just set this thing to the side, sort of where it is in development, and wait until that team becomes developed or comes into um, becomes available? And then we can slap it on there, and so you'll kind of have gaps where one team is working on it. <laughs> one team is working on it here, then there's kind of a gap of a week, a few months, or whatever, and then another team will pick it up and start working on it from there. Uh, that's agile development. So the reason that is a caveat is because you can see something on the progress tracker that's 100% complete, but it's not 100% complete because there's some mechanic that's missing, there's another team that still needs to jump in and all that. So just because you see a bar has ended three months ago does not mean that that thing is ready to drop into the game right now. Uh, so with that said, the way that I do that, that's, that's the big caveat. The way that I do this is I will start with the roadmap roundup, just kind of read through this, um, which just kind of gives an overview of the really big things that they think changed. Uh, it is usually, usually leaves out a lot of detail, which is why I like to focus on the progress tracker rather than this one, which is the release view. Uh, the release view recently has become far more accurate in the sense that um, it used to be back in previous years, uh, actually probably the start of this year, it wasn't very accurate, so it wasn't useful at all. Something could be on here and it was just totally, it was blue sky stuff. It was kind of like, yeah, it would be cool if at the end of the year we could release salvage and then salvage would get kicked to the next patch and then it would get kicked to the next patch and then it would get kicked to the next patch and it just keeps showing up here. And so this, the release view just kind of became a joke after a while. It's not really a joke anymore, um, but it's not quite as informative as it used to be either. You used to be able to kind of look at a patch and sort of say, oh, okay, they're trying to do like a salvage patch this time. Now you can't really do that because they have so few cards on there at first that's kind of like, I don't know, and it, rivers, <laughs> it, like this... Um, when 3.18 first dropped, the only thing that we had for locations was rivers and sand cave archetypes. So it's kind of like, I don't know, maybe they're going to be doing canyon runs or something. I don't know. But uh, since then, they've added a lot more. And so the release view actually is a bit more useful. If something is listed as committed, it's definitely in the patch. If something is on there as tentative, it is probably about 90 to 95% going to be in that patch. Um, basically, if they put a card on there, they don't put a card on there now unless they're really, really sure they're going to get it in there. It is very rare you see a card drop off in the last couple patches, uh, which is a good thing. That's a big change. And then the last thing I do is, um, oh, and then I just kind of look at what's changed since the last time we looked at this two weeks ago. And then I just kind of go through this. And again, um, I, there's there's not as many changes this time. So again, I'm going to kind of go through what I've noticed that's a big deal. Probably have about 12 or 13 things that are sitting out there that I noticed that are probably significant, at least to me. And uh, I'll spend some time talking about the band Merchant Man. So with that in mind, let's uh, pop on over to the Roadmap Roundup and get started. And again, I'll put things in the down below part so that you can skip through and uh, let's go.
So this is the roadmap roundup where they just kind of give their sort of overview of what happened. Um, I do occasionally like to look up here in the top part because they hide things up there um, very rarely, which I've been paranoid about because they did it to me once and I didn't catch it and they haven't done it again. And I know the next time I don't read that thing will be the time they do it. So here we go. Notable changes for November 23rd, 2022. Release view. The following cards have been added to release view. Drake Cutter. Building, implementing, and balancing Drake Interplanetary Starter Ship. The Cutter is a game-ready vehicle. And it is it is kind of a cool one. It's um It's never gonna win prettiest ship in the verse, but it's got a decent sized uh cargo bay to it. Um you can fit small vehicles in there and stuff. Uh the ramp is flat at the bottom so um doesn't have the problem that the uh cutlass has where you'll kind of be backing a rock or something onto it and you'll start falling off the ramp which is kind of annoying i imagine that's something that'll be fixed when the cutlass goes to gold standard but here we go Anvil C8R Pisces, building, implementing, and balancing Anvil Aerospace Ambulance. The C8R Pisces is a game ray vehicle. So the C8R is interesting. So this kind of creates a dilemma for, for Carrick users or owners because now you have the C8 Expedition, the C8X, and the C8R. Uh, the standard Pisces is fine, but the Expedition is a clear improvement over it with the extra guns. Um, but now that's got a little bit of competition because this thing has a medical bed in it, which makes it a little bit more useful as an away ship. So it kind of depends on whether you want the cargo room or you want to, or if you think it's going to be a little bit more of a dangerous mission. Um, unfortunately, it's not a module. They are set ships. So the way the carrot goes is it goes way out into the universe. So you're going to be way out in the middle of nowhere, and whatever ship you brought, that's what you're stuck with. Um, we are talking in my org, links below, um, about medical gameplay and why you would actually need a Tier 3 medical, bread, uh, medical bed. Uh, which is what the C8R has. And what we're coming up with, because at the moment, if you have a medical gun or a medical pen, it'll heal you faster than the bed would, and the bed can't do regeneration, or it won't be able to eventually. I think it actually can right now, but don't don't expect that to last more than a couple patches. Um, but it kind of shows where they're going to go or might show where they're going to go in the future when they get to, I guess it'd be tier two medical gameplay because the pins are kind of like an adrenaline shot. It's 100% all or nothing. Take this right now to stop the thing. Whereas the med guns are a little bit more nuanced. You can kind of be like, take 20% of the thing. Um, what we're thinking is that the med bed, the med guns won't actually bring you back from a down state, but they'll be able to heal you, whereas the med beds will actually be able to resuscitate you. Uh, so right now you point the med gun um, at someone fired if they're in a down state and they'll go, no, ah, like that, and they'll pop up. Um, there might be limits to that or like a ramp where you go off a certain part of the curve once you cross that threshold, now you have to be stabilized and brought back by a med bed, but you're not dead yet. It doesn't count for final death. Then you have tier two med beds that will actually be able to heal things like broken bones. Um, and tier one beds obviously can regenerate you or bring you back from death, I guess. I guess that's what regeneration is. But we were just kind of speculating that on the org. That might actually be a chat on its own if I can ever drag Sinister Puppy and a few of the guys from the org out here. Uh, but let's go on after that little detour. Uh, the following cards have passed their final review for Alpha 318. Therefore, we are changing their stats to committed. This means they're 100% in, in the patch. 
Uh, salvage hole stripping. The first implementation of salvage into the persistent universe, which includes both hole stripping as well as repair. This will include both performing hole stripping and repairs by hand, as well as hole stripping and using the systems aboard the Drake Vulture and the Aegis Reclaimer. So, um, was debating a exploit on this. I don't know if I should share this, but yeah, a couple people go out, one in a Reclaimer, one in a C2. The C2 guy lands, shuts off his shields, hops in the Reclaimer, and they salvage the C2 and rinse and repeat until you've filled up the reclaimer. I'm guessing that'll only work for about a year or two before they hit the reclaim times, which uh, I'll put a card up above in my things that are going to change. Reclaim times are going to go way up, so when the game goes gold, that won't be an exploit. Uh, moving on. Grey Cat Multi-Tool Salvage Attachment. Designing and creating the multi-tool salvage attachment includes asset creation, animation, and balancing. I think that one, I think that one's been done a while. We'll, we'll take a look when we go to the progress tracker, if I remember. If I don't, it's because I'm old. Uh, so that's it for the roadmap roundup. So let's pop on over to the release view and see what has changed. So this is the release view, um, which is interesting. Usually you can look up here and they actually say PTU version 318. So I'm wondering, did they drop 318 to the PTU? Because it should say EPTU, because I think it's just an Evocati now. Uh, but if not, congratulations. Maybe that explains where everybody is. Uh, so for 317, they just put the Pisces and the Cutter on there. Uh, so originally, when 317 dropped to us we had the whole a and i think the scorpius and then the mule was kind of the surprise drop and then they dropped the centurion on us now they're dropping the corsair we got the steve we got the cutter we got the pisces so i mean originally we were supposed to get two ships we ended up with eight granted the corsair was supposed to be a 318 asset but 318 got delayed uh so here we are they're saying 318 i did not think they were going to be getting this out by December. Just from the sound of it, it was going to be a lot later. They're still saying end of December or December release, or at least release to the PC, uh, PTU. So, I don't know, gang. Maybe. Um, so, location. So, we've got uh, Damer Crash Site. None of these are new. Uh, gameplay. They added Cargo System Refactor, which I've been saying for a while. If 318, the three major pillars are the cargo system refactor, salvaging, and persistent any streaming, with persistent any streaming being the huge one. Uh, I was saying they probably aren't going to launch without those three things. Um, so I'd, I'd say cargo system refactor is probably pretty solid. Um, but as far as things they added, time trial races, um, salvage hole stripping, move to committed, like they said on the roadmap roundup. Uh, Drake Vulture is still tentative, which is surprising because on the progress tracker it's been done for a while. Grey Cat multi tool salvage attachment, move to committed. Uh, PES, still tentative. Gen 12 scene render, still tentative. Uh, so that's really it for the release view. Not a bunch of changes, just mostly cards changing from tentative to committed in those cases um yeah i'd say probably the most interesting thing is that ptu version 318 i'm pretty sure that means evocati not general ptu um let's pop on over to the progress tracker okay so uh i'm just gonna kind of swing through here i'll just go sort of say a few general things uh aerodynamic control surfaces little ways off um that one will be really cool for the flight model, but not really moving through it yet. AI trained combat. This is uh, kind of a cool one, or untrained combat. Um, I'm guessing this will probably be a pyro asset, but it's one of those things um, it could conceivably drop for 319, but I'd kind of be a little bit surprised. Uh, it's basically civilians, like people that don't fight with guns will pick up a gun and just start like firing wildly at you, or, you know, like, punch you like this or eh, 
Ah, who knows? That's my theory. Uh, vehicle perception just allows AI uh, vehicles to um, see you when you're on the ground, uh, like running around on the ground, so ships might actually strafe you now. Uh, recognize ground vehicles and stuff like that, so they might attack you if you're in a Tonk or even a Grey Cat PTV. Uh, moving on down, so this is an interesting one. So when I was speculating about the unannounced vehicles and there was two potentials for the uh, Pisces and the Cutter, I said the Cutter was the 41-week one because it was bigger and the Pisces was the 31-week one because it's smaller. Got that reverse. So the Pisces was actually the 41-week one. And looking back on it, it kind of makes sense. Just looking at the cutter, it is basically a ship shape with a box cut out, cut out of it. So the internals, even though it has a working toilet and a bed, pretty simple. It, it has like a, a box room makes up three quarters of the ship or at least two thirds of it. Whereas the Pisces actually kind of has to future proof for medical gameplay. So it has the medical bed. That sliding glass doors, all that. Um, you can see they got a little bit more time to work on it. They always do that with the ships. Uh, even though we have it, they'll always give themselves a little bit more time. So you can sort of see the vehicle feature team is the one that's working on it right now. They'll kind of see what we're doing with it. They'll get a little bit of feedback from the community. If people are like, this thing flies like crap, or wow, I can kill... I can kill an Idris in this thing. They're going to be like, Ooh, something might be broken. Let's go fix that. Um, or if all of a sudden it becomes the ship everybody is using for uh, PvP combat, they'll probably take a look at it. They always do that with their new ships. They want to make sure things are kind of as balanced as they can be at this point in the game. Um, AR map marker system. I kind of had a hope that this would be a 318 asset, but... There's a few of these that are kind of all tied into maps and scanning, and it's not a card on the release view. So I'm guessing that's going to be a 319 asset. We're going to get like a big quality of life UI improvements for 319, I hope. Argo SRV, this is a big tractor beam ship. Think like a tugboat. Probably... Probably a 4.0 asset. I would assume that is probably going to come... Even if they finish it here, it's probably going to wait until the next implementation of cargo when we start getting the big crates. Um, and when you see the whole sea pop up on the roadmap, that's when the Argo SRV will probably make an appearance. Because at that point, you're going to be getting the freight elevators and everything else. Um, and cargo, rather than appearing magically on your ship, you're going to be... It'll appear in your hangar, and you'll be manually loading it into your ship. Or you'll have a timer. You'll you'll basically say, station, load this. It'll be, cool, you got a C2. Come back in two days. And in two days, the workers on the station will have loaded your ship. And so it'll be magically loaded, but there'll be a timer. Whereas if you did it yourself, you could probably do it in 30 minutes with a couple friends. ROSRV, waiting for that next level. Artificial gravity, I've been saying for a while that I think 319 will be a sneaky engineering patch. I think we're going to be getting like um, the ship CPU and stuff like that. This one has been growing since they added it. You can kind of see that it's right now sort of aimed for June of next year, which would probably make it a 4.0 patch, which might be scuttling my idea. They still might have like a uh, a basic... Um, they might have like a basic engineering patch, kind of like what they're doing right now with Salvage, where they have hole stripping and then they're going to have hole munching. It might be that where they'll kind of be like, okay, now you can go in and you can switch things on and off. And then the next one will be, you can turn gravity on and off. You can turn the atmosphere on and off. Might be what they're doing. Complete blue sky speculation on my part. Asteroid facility is kind of cool. Think bunkers in space, still a long ways out. End of quarter two next year, it's it's a pyro asset, uh, which makes sense that um, I think pyro was originally a 
mining system that was mined out and just kind of abandoned and that's why all the pirates are there now um you'd have to follow paul shelley who is the uh lore master info runners uh captain stable if you don't follow him and you found me somehow i don't know how but welcome okay the band of merchantmen so this is where i'm going to take a little bit more of an aside than i would do so right now I'm going to play a couple vids from, um, I believe it was ISC, and I'm going to play one where they're kind of first talking about, and they start kind of subtly dropping hints that the ship is a big deal, and they've got two people working on it. This thing is the size of an 890. It's alien tech, the first alien ship that's fully realized in the game. Yes, the Defender is in there, but the Defender is tiny, and it's got, like, one room, so they basically just had to make one kind of organic-looking room. They've got... Banu Merchantman is a whole different monster, so let's go ahead and watch these videos. I'll come back, and I'll have a couple more things to say. Alien Week is here, and with it, our annual celebration of Shion, Banu, Tavarin, and even the dreaded Vanduul. And if you haven't already, check out the various contests and activities happening across social on the robertspaceindustries.com website. But for us here at ISC, we thought we'd take this week to dedicate entirely to exploring the current status of the highly anticipated Banu Merchantman. Now, warning, much of it is still in gray box or early white box phase. Still, there's a lot to explore of its mysterious interior. Let's find out more. I think when tackling a ship that's got so many unknowns about it, it's a you know, completely new art style, or it's not something that a lot of the team kind of worked on before, we kind of need to make sure that we're approaching it in the most sensible way we can. All right, so some old thunder. We are jumping in with our devs. Uh, we have got uh, vehicle art director, Mr. Ben Curtis. Hello. Hello. And senior vehicle designer, Mark Gibson. Hello. And we are going to be showing the very real, very current uh, progress of the Banu Merchantman. Before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about where we are uh, in that process. Uh, ben, we know the Banu Merchantman has been in development for a while, and it's not in development. Set this up for us. Where are we at uh, overall um, in this development? The exterior is going through its gray box pass. Um, so it's looking a little bit more advanced than um, the interior of the ship that we'll see in a bit. Um, we've basically got two artists on it and we kind of chop the ship up into different um, parts that they can work on. And um, we're just going through and making sure that everything that needs to fit in the ship is going to fit in the ship. Yeah, you kind of like led into it quite well there, the merchantman. That's like the big elephant in the room for me. I didn't say this. <laughs> no, 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 but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the big market. expectation. That's clearly um, on your mind. It is on my mind. Uh, yeah. It's a very, very beautiful elephant. Um, but it's very large. Um, I think that's the one that, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that's the one for me that um, is got the most unknowns around it. Um, we're still kind of actively working on it due to, to basically people chasing new adventures um, and just in slight priority changes. Um, we've kind of got a skeleton team that are currently working on the exterior. Um, the exterior is progressing along well. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's gone through most of its modeling. We're starting to do kind of uh, material breakups and, and that sort of stuff and really, you know, defining the, the overall exterior shape. Um, but we do need to look at that and decide whether or not it's, you know, now's the right time for it with the current team we've got um, or whether or not we, you know, focus on, on mm. other ships. Um, so it's still in progress at the moment. Uh, when it's going to actually come out is completely yeah, unknown at the moment. We're at a sort of like crossroads with it where we've done a, a lot of, uh, like the interior is white box, yeah, uh, yeah, the exterior is further yeah. along, and we're at a point where we continue down the path and we absorb that amount of time that this ship of that size is going to take, or we, production phrase, put a pin in it and uh, move on to something else, which is going to be a better use of our time so I can hear all the merchantman owners mm. screaming now. Um, but like there is a big capital ship. Um, it's, it's maybe there are smaller ships that would come sooner that add better value to the game. It, it's got to be one of the most complicated ones. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the size of the, the 90s. And it's for 
that being a band new ship, the art direction style is so much more than anything we've ever done. Like mm -hmm. even with the 890, we had some origin stuff to go from with the 600. Yes, the the style completely evolved over the course of the 890, but the merchantman's just. It's not just a capital ship. It, it's an alien, brand new merchantman. Pretty huge much every capital ship. every other capital ship in the game is human and is modular to some extent. Like you yeah. make one corridor piece, you've made ninety percent of the corridors in the ship. And with mm -hmm. merchantman, that's not true. Like so much more. Every, every, like every corridor yeah. is it always the entire thing. thing. It 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 needs that that time and. Yeah. and that, I have that expectation, like I said, about managing expectations. We could make it all modular, it wouldn't be what we want. It would be cool. Yeah. And, and so th there's, there's a fine balance. And yeah, with every ship, we, we, yeah, we try and reuse stuff and we try and take the, the most sensible approach to it. But the Merchman has like very little to pull from. Um, but anyway, Merchman. Done, right. Um, wait, wait, no, no, not mer Merchantman done. Merchantman done. Oh, sorry, sorry, right, right. 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 Talking about the Merchantman is done. Okay, so the sense that I get from that is that right now with the Banu Merchantman, they're kind of, I wouldn't say hitting a wall, they're kind of hitting a point of what can the ship do? It can move huge amounts of cargo, but it's got these stores. Having our lead ship designer, one of our lead ship designers involved in this thing, could we pull people off of the Banu Merchantman and bust out a bunch of smaller ships with the time that they're spending on the Banu Merchantman? So uh, kind of one of the things that I got at in um, that change video was the sort of average group size is going to be like two to five people uh, for people that aren't playing solo. So obviously a group, two to five people. Banu Merchantman is gonna probably require to be to be really effective probably gonna require at least five people at least four human beings running things you might be able to get away with some npcs maybe a blade but we don't even know if banu tech will allow blades i assume they will uh but it's a huge ship. It's the size of an 890, and it's going to take them a long, long time to do it. And unlike the 890, kind of like John Crew is saying, every asset in the Banu Merchantman, because it's a work of art, and each one is in theory unique, every single hallway is like a curving, unique structure. It's not like the human ships that are corridors. Like, um, if you build an Aegis ship or a Crusader ship or an Origin ship, you're still building something with a human conception. So this is an alien race. So every single aspect of this ship, they have to step back and be like, okay, an alien designed this. What would it act like? What would it do? And they need to nail that for this ship because this ship is going to be the style guide for an entire species. So that's kind of what I'm getting from what they're saying there. And I actually completely agree. This is a ship that I have wanted since inception. So if they need to take a step back and sort of say, we need to kind of think about this and make it what we want it to be. And if we need to go and make smaller ships during that time, that's what we're gonna do. So in addition to that, there's gameplay that the Banner Merchantman could bring in like shops. And they might be able to bring in a smaller, uh, smaller ship with a shop to kind of test out the mechanics and get working right, and then implement it in the Merchantman once it drops. Uh, so all of the Merchantman's mechanics aren't in either. Uh, it could also be used to carry passengers in the same way that the 890 can, to a certain extent. I think it's got two staterooms. Um, so not all of its mechanics are in. And yes, it could be just used as a giant cargo carrier, but um, that would kind of be selling it short. I would rather it dropped 
into a game that's ready for it and to the point where CIG doesn't look at it a year from now and be like, damn it, we should have done this, this, and this differently. Now we're going to have to take the thing apart, redesign it, and kind of redo this room like they did with the 600i. Um, it's going to use Alien UI, everything else. So the band merch man is going to take a lot of time to finish. And that was something that I've been saying for a while, that right here you have the EU vehicle content team working on it till the end of time, basically, <laughs> through quarter two of next year, which is as far as they're planning it. Um, but it was always... Rue just snorted, so Rue agrees, uh, or disagrees. He might be disagreeing. Uh, but it could still... It would definitely be having a UI pass. It would definitely be having another VFX pass. It would definitely be having an audio pass, which isn't even on here. So the downstream teams weren't even in. So even if they just said, let's not put a pen in it, let's keep going, you're still looking at probably the end of the year before we'd see this thing. And they'd probably have to pull on a couple more people from the vehicle feature team, which all of them are really slammed. And I'll kind of get to that in a second. Actually, let's look at this. So I'm going to open this in another version. Let's wait for it to load up here. So what I'm looking at here is the team. So let's look. Here is the vehicle content team for the EU. So this is the team that's currently working on the BMM. So you can see they're working on the Argo SRV, the Vanu Merchantman, Crusader Spirit, the Biscal C, Resource Management, the RSI Lynx, Squadron 42 Vehicle Support, and look how big that one is. So, I mean, you've got Art and Designer just going on this. They're trying to crush Squadron 42 out there, and this isn't really apologizing for them. This is just being realistic about game development. This is how it goes sometimes. They're doing it live, so we are actually getting a look behind the curtain to sort of all of us who have wanted the Merchant Man for all this time, yeah, it's a little heartbreaking to look at this and be like, we're so close, just give it to us. But on the other hand, what else could they be doing with that dev time? So we will get it eventually. And one thing Jared says over and over again that I actually agree with is you want your ship, the ship you really, really want to be last. Because at the end of the day, every time they make a ship, they learn something new. So, like I was saying about the 400i, they learned that if you have a ladder right next to the elevator, then if the, they could shut off the power in the ship and you still have a way to get from one floor to the other. So it can add gameplay that way. The You look at the 400i versus the 600 the 600 was a mess, which is why they have to rebuild it now, and they basically have to gut the whole interior. You look at the 400i, it's basically perfect. Everybody walked around this, and they're like, why didn't you do this for the 600i? It's because they had to go through the process of screwing up the 600i first. So I'd rather they don't do that with the Merchantman. So if the Merchantman comes later, I can do it. Ran over. Let's keep going. So bombs um released in 315 this is the smaller bombs um which last time we saw bombs in uh isc i think they're being dropped by a gladius so it might be one of those things where you can trade out missiles for bombs like you can on a fighter nowadays and we know the um the a1 spirit is going to have size five bombs so medium sized bombs so precursor to that uh, Bounty Hunter, V2, there's another thing that could be a sneaky ad for 319, I was originally thinking, but then they kind of stretch it out with these two teams, I'm thinking 4.0, which would make a lot of sense, because now you'd have Bounty Hunters that would have to go into Pyro to get someone, which is a lot riskier. Uh, building Interiors, this one's kind of cool. I was thinking that they were going to talk a lot about this at ISC, and they did not. Um, I was thinking that this would kind of be the mentioned a lot in the um, Larville Redux, and it ended up not being that. And again, this is another one that's pushed way out there, so earliest we're going to see that one is 4.0. Cargo System Refactor, again, this is one of the pillars of 3.18 in my view. 3.18 won't drop without it, but it's looking pretty solid. 
cave archetypes. Uh, this is like the sandy cave, the ice cave. Um, I think they're going to have a rocky cave. I'm trying to think of other ones, maybe a crystal cave or something, who knows. But they're going to be working on this one for a while, but we'll probably get little versions of it. It's been going for close to two years of dev time, 107 weeks. So truck them right along. Um, I don't know why I have the chapters open. They've They've just been kind of plugging away at the chapters for squad 42 i've been running on the theory that squad 42 is going to have a go no go in december uh still doesn't look bad for that it's totally possible they say no go we're not we're not ready don't move to beta go no go to beta not not to gold beta which would mean we'd probably be two to three years out from gold uh once they move to beta uh character work i always thought character work was cool this is um all of this is the real character creator and all the different motions um all that their character in squad 42 will do but it'll directly impact our character in the pu uh what we can do with them so chances are when they're done with this they'll they'll do it to that too uh moving on down crusader spirit they've started work on it now uh so this should start getting more and more accurate as they go through again note there's no downstream teams in here so probably near the end of next year we'll probably get the crusader spirit at least one of them i would guess we'll probably get the cargo version and then the passenger one if they have passenger missions in the game this might be the one they tested on again uh this kind of goes to my theory that they might bring in a um a small ship that's sort of a starter ship that does a shop uh to test out that gameplay before they bring in the banner merchant man with its I think nine shops um they might do the same thing with the crusader spirit since it's a smaller ship is bring it in to test out ga passenger gameplay and then start working on the genesis starliner which is huge uh same thing Cutting tier two, this is with the little multi-tool. Um, it's a little ways out. We already know that that gameplay is going to be integrated into Squadron 42. It's a big part of it, so 34 weeks, probably going to be pretty accurate. Uh, let's see, derelict ships, um, points of interest. We got it in 316. We're getting more in 318. We're probably going to get even more in 319. Um Basically, these are just the ships that they're breaking up, having AI run around them, having missions around derelicts. Uh, I think space derelicts are a different one. I could be wrong about that, but let's roll on down. Drake Corsair, big surprise. That one's finished. Drake Cutter, there it is. Again, 32 weeks. So I guess it's easier to make a big empty space than it is to put stuff in it. Um, surprise, surprise. Dynamic events. This is one that even though it ends out here, they're never going to stop working on dynamic events. Dynamic events is going to be going five years from now because they're always going to be making more dynamic events. Um, <clears throat> they might tweak them so that they don't have to put as much work into them and so they're not as individualized, but they'll be gone for a while. Uh, any properties plug-in, environmental space missions, that's the one that I think was going to be it. EVA tier two. So I was thinking this was going to be a sneaky ad for 318. Uh, probably going to be 319 instead. I said it was kind of on the edge of that window. I think originally it was down here and now it's out here. Uh, so we'll probably be able to fly around like um, like Iron Man at that point. Uh, flak ammunition. They actually, the weapon content team just started working on it. But again, this is one of those where they've got big gaps. And what I say about big gaps is. Uh, don't count on them. Uh, that means this dev team out here said, um, yeah, we could we could probably work on that in March of next year. And they kind of penciled it in, but they could easily, anytime between here and here, be dragged onto something that CIG thinks is more worthy of their time. So it's like the same thing they're talking about doing with the BMM. They might put a pen in it. Uh, freight elevators. This one's important for cargo. Um, again, cargo tier two, you're not going to see the SRV or the whole C until that next tier of cargo comes in and freight elevators will probably be a big part of that. So when this drops, that probably means they've 
they're going to move to the next tier of cargo moving. And that's when we'll get the whole C in the SRB. Uh, so probably 4.0. Frontier clothing, clothing that we'll get in Pyro. Um, Gen 12 render, there's a 318 asset. Wrapping pretty soon, looking pretty good, even though it's tentative. Uh, hacking tier zero. So this is an interesting one. Just wrapped. Uh, looks like it's pretty good. Um, they haven't mentioned it in 318, and I have a feeling this is kind of its own game loop. I have a feeling that they probably would if it actually was dropping in 318, so probably 319. I've been saying for a while that hacking would have good synergy with um, tier zero engineering. Just being able to break into ships and being able to counter hack would be would be good synergy. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's a 319 asset. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go through a bunch of these. Jump points, obviously, a 4.0 asset. Ladders, they talked about that a few weeks ago. Again, probably not a 318 asset at this point, but who knows? They might sneak it in there. Uh, life support tier 0. This kind of goes along with my idea that 319 will be engineering. This might be the next step of engineering uh, because this is looking like a 4.0 asset out here. Lockable containers, that'll probably play with uh, hacking. So we probably won't get hacking until we get lockable containers, because when you have lockable containers, you'd want to be able to hack them open. Moving on. Laravel Seascape. So this was um, this was at Sitcon. They talked about this. Uh, trucking along. And again, this is the landing zone team. Um, Around here at the end of quarter two, this isn't necessarily, I think that this is just kind of as far as they have it planned out right now is around June of next year. So that doesn't necessarily mean Lorville is dropping in June of next year. That just might be, yeah, we're going to be working on this for at least the next six months is kind of what that is. Map system rework is kind of one of those UI quality of life things that I think is going to hit in 319. Um we're out there near the end of the year. MFD rework, another quality of life thing, but this one's a little bit further out. This is one of those where they could drop it to us earlier and then kind of add in apps in future patches, like uh, knickknacks and things like that. So we'll kind of get the base functionality, but then we'll start getting other apps that we have access to. We'll see. It's it's not dropping into the game until that next one. Moby Glass rework. It technically wrapped right now, which I don't think it's going to be in 318, probably 319 asset. I think that's going to be our UI asset. Mop and bucket. I've talked about that one before. It's more than just a mop and bucket. It's NPCs being able to use two-handed objects, which is big. New interdiction scenarios. I think that's going to be space mines. We don't get it until Pyro. Moving on. Uh, new missions around Orison. They've talked about this. It's going to be 318. Looks pretty good. New player experience. These are mostly... No, that actually is the verse. Again, this sort of shows you that... You're sort of seeing Pyro as a soft beta, I think. 4.0 will be sort of a soft beta. Because if they start doing a new player experience at that point, it means they're kind of like... We're not quite feature complete, but we're at the point where the basics aren't going to be changing. So the flight model is going to be the same moving out, or it's not going to change much. The whatever, the whatever, the whatever. So we can teach people how to play the game because this basic part isn't changing. Ocean shaders, wrapping pretty soon. Might make it into 318. Um, I would guess probably, um, probably four, or, uh, 319 at the earliest. Origin X1, little Origin space bike. Again, there's a big gap in between the teams taking it over. So never count on that. I would guess they're going to drop the Origin X1 with um, the 600i rework. So um, yeah, when they hop back on the 600i, expect them to sort of bust out the X1. Uh, moving on, outposts, let's see, persistent hangers. Again, this is another big one that will be for that cargo gameplay. Persistent A streaming, again, we're getting a version of this for 318. 
I think they said it's committed or is it tentative? It's still tentative. Uh, but you can sort of see they're going to be working on entity streaming for a long time. We're just kind of getting the the first iteration of it. They're going to iterate it on it and iterate on it and iterate on it. Like uh, Gen 12 Render will be the same way. Uh, physical damage. Ropes and physical uh, physics rope simulation. This is one that's interesting because they have never talked about it on an ISC. I assume it's going to be for some sort of exploration gameplay. I had a theory that it would be for the new caves, uh, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. Um, they haven't talked about it at all. They haven't talked about what you can do with ropes, so that one's kind of cool. I would love to hear more uh, player interactables. Um, physical interactions, we're good there. Prone, tier one, they talked about this at SitCon. Again, this one, probably not coming real soon, and I think that'll probably miss what I think is the window for 319, so that'll probably be 4.0 we'll get prone. Uh, unless they drop it to us in a quasi-finished state, like there'll be more functionality added later, but here you go. Now you can sort of do the basics. Uh, Pyro Space Station's obviously a Pyro asset. Pyro System, obviously Pyro. Quantum Simulation, this is a big one. Um, again, it's ending around quarter two, but that could just be because that's as far out as they've got it planned. Quantum simulation, we've already got aspects of Quanta working in the game, so uh it'll they'll they'll be iterating on it and iterating on it and iterating on it. We'll get that one in bits and pieces like now this is impacted by Quanta, now this is impacted by Quanta. That's the way it'll work. So even though this is one of those that's kind of the opposite of if you see a finished bar, it might not be finished. This one we might get it before it's finished because they can sort of move in modules. Um, there's a few things they have like that. Quantum travel experience, probably not getting that. Um, actually, that could be it's sort of a UI improvement. Um, could make it for 319. Like I said, 319 could be a real good UI patch, if nothing else. Rastar, that's how they build all their outposts and everything. Eventually, it's what people who have a pioneer will use to build outposts or estates and stuff uh looks pretty cool from what they've shown resource management huge for both managing resources and power on your ship as well as in the verse at large got a ways to go um probably be a 4.0 asset at least a 4.0 asset um and again, this is one of those that we could get in bits and pieces. We could get like a module that pertains to our ship for engineering gameplay around here. And then they kind of keep iterating on it. And now it works on stations. Now it works on uh, outposts and stuff. So, you know, our side links, they're still working on it. Uh, again, this is, they've got. This is actually the vehicle content team here that's working on it, so it's no longer concepting. But expect at this stage of development, it's just white box. They're just they're just getting the shape and the shape language down. No downstream teams involved, so expect that time to stretch out just a hair. It's a ground vehicle, and it's based on the Ursa. Um, so it should go pretty quick. Uh, but. Yeah, it, it expect it to be probably, I'd guess, a 4.0 asset. Uh, salvage vehicle munching, this is salvage tier 1, basically. This is where you can actually start chewing up the actual body of the ship. It's going to drop around pyro, if I had to guess, so that'll be a 4.0 asset. Uh, salvage tier 0, this is what we're getting right now. This is hole stripping, I believe. Release 318. I think that that one's committed. You could tell they wrapped it. Um, so something catastrophic would have to happen for them to drop that out. Uh, satellites, points of interest. Um, I think this one's just concept art. Yeah, so they're they're just kind of thinking about different kinds of concepts. They haven't actually started building game assets yet. Or at least according to that, they haven't. Security network. Um, again, that'll probably go along with hacking. 
115 weeks, long sprint, uh, around quarter two of next year, probably a 4.0 asset. Security post prey activation, wrap, that's a 318 asset. Ship CPU, again, for engineering, wrapping pretty soon. So, again, that kind of goes with the idea that 319 would be a tier zero engineering multi-crew gameplay patch. Uh, space mines, I think that'll be huge for interdictions, but again, team doesn't pick it up until way out, so that's that's blue sky. We think we can do it. Squadron 42 vehicle support, that's where, if you want to know why ship X isn't done yet, this is why. This is why. Look at all those teams. All of those teams are currently working on Squadron 42, and that's why you don't have ship X. Stamp fashion. Um, should be seeing examples of that pretty soon. I wouldn't be surprised if we get some of that in 318, probably 319. Star Wars, that's uh, localization, so different languages for different parts of the planet, like our actual planet, not inverse planet. Uh, subsumption editor. Um, Trial race missions is another 318 asset, which is interesting. You can see it keeps going. What they're actually doing there is they're probably going to drop a few courses to us in 318. Then they're going to drop a few more in 319 because it's all tiered. So you go through a couple of races here. It gives you access to this race. You, go, you win that race. You can go to the Rainbow Bridge level on Mario. That's how that works. Unannounced ships. A lot of these unannounced ships have been done forever. Uh, I've been working on the theory. So this this one's interesting. This is what I think is the um, the galaxy. Is this one that's just audio and VFX? I think the reason it's audio and VFX is because it's going to be the video of Jimmy going and grabbing um, Jacks in the galaxy. And that's why it's audio on VFX is because it's part of a movie. It's not people gray boxing it and making like the usual concept art brochure. That's that's my theory. Uh, but what's interesting about this is we've also got this one right here, which is 20 weeks audio on VFX. I think it's just a duplicate. Uh, the only other one it could be is not underground facilities not that one 71 weeks this is the other one that it could be this is a gigantic ship 71 weeks for the concept art uh i still say it is likely this is a fleet week warship and a big one and not the galaxy um I'm I'm leaning towards this audio VFX one being the galaxy. Uh could be totally wrong on that. If if this is the galaxy, then it means they're actually planning on working on it next year, which is interesting because they don't have the time to work on a BM merchantman. Do they have something to work do they have time to work on something the size of a carrot that's thirteen years newer? Probably piss off a lot of people. I would assume that's concept only. Uh, moving on down, underground facilities. We saw this at Sitcon, uh, probably a 4.0 asset. Um, unified item ports is kind of a cool one, wrapping pretty soon. Vehicle tractor beams, obviously you have to have this for the SRV, and it would be a late tier thing for, um, for cargo moving. And... Uh, there's there's a good number of ships out there outside the SRV that have uh, tractor beams. Whole C uses one. Um, the Argo, oh what is it? Not mole. Argo raft. That's it. So the the raft has a little tractor beam on the back of it. Uh, Caterpillar, if I didn't mention that on already, has a tractor beam. Kind of part of its whole deal. It opens up that side. Tractor beam stings in. Volt guns, uh, these are apparently in Squadron 42, which is kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if they'll actually have a stun ability, um, but kind of cool. Wrapping pretty soon. Most of the other ones have already wrapped, so this is the rifle, I believe. Yeah, assault rifle. So this is their assault rifle version. I think the Fresnel is the pistol. 
No, that's the uh, SMG. So the pulse is probably the pistol, and then the quartz is probably shotgun. I don't know. Uh, weapon misfire and wear. Again, that'll kind of be an engineering thing. Not working on it until next year. So take it with a grain of salt. CRG push pull. Iron manning around. Maybe 319. And gang, that is it. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for sticking this through to the end. Um, if you've watched more than one of these, consider subscribing to me because I drop these every other week and I have other videos where I basically vomit out all my thoughts onto you. And if you like being vomited on, I probably didn't sell that very well. Um, like and subscribe. See me next time.